A U.S. Capitol police officer has been killed and another injured after a man drove a car into the North Security Barricade at the Capitol complex on Friday. Acting Capitol Police Chief Yogananda Pittman identified the fallen officer as William Evans, also known as Billy. He was an 18-year veteran of the force and a member of the Capitol Division's First Responders Union. NBC News Capitol correspondent Casey Hunt joins us now with the latest. Casey. Uh, Joe, good morning. Uh, the Capitol Police community has just been shattered again by violence, of course, after they lost another member of the force in the wake of the January 6th insurrection. Uh, and now there's real fear that the Capitol will continue to be a target. This morning, the debate over securing the U.S. Capitol is escalating after Friday's deadly car attack. With new concrete barriers installed over the weekend, the head of the Capitol Police Union making an urgent plea to lawmakers to ramp up security, saying in a statement the department is below its authorized level by 233 officers and is struggling to meet existing mission requirements and warning of a potential flood of departures from the ranks, saying, quote, I've had many younger officers confide in me that they're actively looking at other agencies and departments right now. It all comes after the trauma of the January 6th Capitol insurrection, which left one Capitol Police officer dead and led to extra scrutiny after many felt the Capitol Police were underprepared. Retired General Russell Honore, advising Congress on security after the insurrection, says lawmakers must increase police funding. Our nation deserve it, and those families who've lost loved ones deserve it, and we need to up our game in support of the Capitol Police. Friday's attack killed Officer Billy Evans and injured his colleague, Officer Ken Shaver, after the suspect, Noah Green, rammed his car into the two men at a barricade. Authorities said Green was shot after jumping out of the car, wielding a knife, and lunging at officers. Green later died. With flags lowered and Evans' honor around Washington this weekend, the fallen officer's friends remembering him. He was so proud uh, to be, uh, you know, on that force and to, um, you know, serve and protect our, our lawmakers and our country. Evans' surviving colleague, Ken Shaver, drawing cheers from Capitol Police officers leaving the hospital Saturday. <laughs> Meanwhile, as authorities try to determine the suspect's motive, police visiting this Virginia home three hours outside Washington, where Green grew up. The Washington Post reports his family issued a statement Saturday pointing to his depression and potential mental illness, saying he was not a terrorist by any means. So the Senate uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has pointed out that there is a bipartisan review process going on in Senate committees, but plans for a 9-11 style commission to investigate the insurrection and, of course, the security failures that would uh, potentially need to be fixed in order to continue to protect the Capitol community has been sidelined by partisan bickering. Joe. Yeah, uh, Casey, you've heard some complaining, uh, mainly from Republicans who don't like the fence, don't like the extra security measures around the Capitol. Uh, it, certainly, you look at what happened uh, in this instance and look at the fact that there are still threats coming into the Capitol Hill police. Uh, are they going to continue to keep those barricades up to keep not only members of Congress, but also the officers safe? So, Joe, a lot of the fencing came down, and that's why this car was able to get where it ended up on Friday. It ran into a barricade that has been a traditional part of the Capitol security all the way along. It, it would have been there before January 6th. It, it, it continues to be there, of course, after January 6th. But they pulled that perimeter in, and there still is a fence uh, that prevents people from getting to the actual Capitol that would prevent basically what happened on January 6th. Cars are just a different manner. I think the, the center of the problem here is that the insurrection showed that the Capitol is a target that can actually be successfully breached. That didn't used to be the case. I'm not even sure people necessarily realized the state of security at the United States Capitol. You know, I was talking with Senator Coons this morning, and, you know, he pointed out everyone's always been aware of the threat of international terrorism to the Capitol. That's been something that people have dealt with every day. But this idea that it's a target 
for people here in the United States is, is a different and more complex security situation to solve. And, and that really does present a challenge when you're trying to find the right balance between making the Capitol accessible to people as a symbol of democracy. I mean, you've worked in the building. You, you know what it's like to come and go. It, it's never been that hard. And you have people visiting, say, from Florida or any other state. You can easily take them around. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice perk and, frankly, stands for the values of the place. But it may need to be reevaluated re considering how much, uh, and Clint Watts made this point uh, to me as well in, in the conversation we had on Way Too Early, that now you may have to actually put something up and then take it down gradually without really mentioning that you're taking it down uh, because it's simply going to be continue to be a, a place that people think of when they think about doing stuff like this, Joe. Right, and, and, and Kenny Kay, you've been around Washington like me long enough to remember when decisions had to be made about Pennsylvania Avenue. My gosh, the locals mm -hmm. went crazy when they closed Pennsylvania Avenue. Now I can't imagine it being open that close to the White House. And yeah. of course, the Capitol Hill complex used to just, it, it used to be wide open. Uh, and then after 9-11, uh, things changed. And I suspect things are going to have to change again. I, symbolism of openness is important, but more important than that is keeping our lawmakers safe. And uh, you look at what happened at the White House, uh, again, when they had to close that, that part of Pennsylvania Avenue, it's actually transformed it into a really nice area now. Yeah, I do remember all the fuss about how I remember how you used to be able to literally just drive past and drive past the front gates and then suddenly it was shut and you'd have thought kind of Armageddon was coming to a, to Washington, <laughs> the way that people responded to that, that this couldn't possibly be happening. And now there's people out there skateboarding, people playing music. I mean, it's also a place for protesters, but it's a little safer because they can be there and they're outside the perimeter and there aren't cars coming backwards and forwards. I think, you know, we've all completely accepted now. And in retrospect, it seems crazy that you ever could drive right past the front door of the White House, right? I mean, now it seems normal that you would have this element of security. And it's true with the Capitol, too. I mean, it was always one of the wonderful things that, you know, people like Casey and I, when we were reporting up from Capitol Hill, we can just wander in and out of those Senate offices and no one ever stops you. But it always did strike me as, a, as an anomaly. I mean, I, I don't think there's any other national office of state like that in any capital in the world, certainly not in the UK. You can't just wander into the Houses of Parliament or in France into the National Assembly. I mean, it just doesn't happen. You're not allowed to do that. And so you do have to have security. And because we do know that people watch the media and they watch TV and January the 6th got a ton of press attention as it had to, and this incident got a ton of press attention, security people have said to me over the last few days, you're going to have copycat incidents. It's now become something that's on the radar of people that want to make some kind of a statement. Well, in Casey, January 6th showed what a soft target the United States Capitol still is. Uh, it did, Joe. And, and that's honestly why um, what happened on Friday was so jarring and shocking to members of the Capitol Hill community, because no one, of course, is over January 6th. I mean, we have had, there have been many, many, many security incidents at the Capitol over the years. Uh, the emails come through. There's a couple streets that are closed. Occasionally you get an announcement over the loudspeakers. And for the longest time, we always thought, it's more than likely that this is a false alarm. And it almost always was. There were a couple uh, incidents. There was a shooting in 2013 that was entirely unrelated to politics. It was something that happened to occur near the Capitol. So obviously there was a, a reaction to it because of its proximity. But it wasn't somebody that was trying to attack the Capitol because of it, it, the implications of that or because of politics. Um, but January 6th changed all of that. Instead of assuming, you know, looking down at your phone and thinking, OK, everything's probably going to be fine. I mean, I was texting our team saying, where are you physically? Are you OK? I mean, that was instead the first thought when we heard that something uh, was happening here. And, you know, that reality, I think, is going to have to drive the decision making. Certainly, it's what the Capitol Police Union is saying. They're saying we're already more than 200 officers short of where we need to be. We've got dozens of officers eligible to retire in three to five years. I'm hearing this is the, the union chief is hearing from younger 
younger officers, that they're looking for other jobs in the department or elsewhere. Uh, so clearly, if they want to maintain the security level that's needed to make sure that our country can uh, function the way it's supposed to, they're going to have to do some deep thinking and, and make some changes. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.